So needless to say, things haven't exactly gone according to plan for our final season here with the Vegas Golden Knights. And that is due to me being sick over the past week and disrupting any momentum that we may have had. Now, of course, this season we're doing quite well. Last year we won 66 games. We fell short in the playoffs, but it just goes to show what this series would continue to be if we were to continue. I mean, this organization top to bottom is absolutely stacked. And I wanted to bring this series back here with this episode and kick things off on a hot note by reacquiring one Tate Dwyer from Montreal. Unfortunately, that cannot happen. Just both of our cap situations are inc uh, incredibly tight, unfortunately. So that can't happen. Hate to break that to you. But I'm still intrigued to see what this squad can do in our final season. And again, I don't want to go overboard with reacquisitions or with, you know, trading away every top prospect and seeing what happens because I can't help but think it would be interesting to run what we've called on Twitch Millberry mode, where we give the AI full control of the organization, signings, trades, everything. Granted, with trades, we'd have to accept all offers, essentially. But giving the AI full control over the organization, just how ridiculous would that be to see the AI try to handle a team with as many assets as we have. I think it'd be rather interesting. Of course, I've talked in the past about ending a series and maybe coming back to it, and oftentimes it doesn't end up happening because we just end up getting you know, overly focused on the new series. It's easy to be fixated on the shiny new toy. But I can't help but think, whether it be on a Twitch stream or if I just record it randomly one night, that seeing what the AI would do in that situation would be extremely fascinating. Because, let's be honest, they would probably ruin the team as Marvin Mason goes down to a concussion. He'll only be out uh, for a good six days, five days, actually. So that's not too big of a loss for us. I'm excited for the rest of this season. As little of it uh, left as there is, we will be getting into the first round playoff matchup as well as you get a look at the lines. It's actually the one thing I forgot to show you. I put us into our best form possible and we'll see how it works out for us. Overall, we've done quite well here. Only one, or actually two regulation losses. We did lose to Anaheim. I completely missed that, but that's okay. That is okay. As we are approaching 50 wins in God knows how many seasons now consecutively. I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be very, very interesting to see the future of this team, how everything pans out, not just with that potential scenario of giving the AI full control, but with this episode as well, because technically this could be the final episode. If we lose in the first round, then that's it. We are over and done with for this series which would be devastating, in my opinion. One way or another, though, I will say, down in those beautiful comments below, leave your opinion, your nominees for the Hall of Famers in this series. Let me know what you think. Whether or not the series ends here if we lose in the first round, doesn't matter. Let me know. That said... We have the division locked up, which is great. So we'll go ahead and sim to the end of the season. And we'll take it from there as Maddox Holt down in the AHL ends up getting injured. It was unfortunate just in general to get sick. And again, I kind of hate as Josh Fotinos is going to be out till the start of the playoffs. Kind of hate that it happened, of course. But it's the type of thing where, you know, if I can't talk for more than two minutes without feeling like I just got kicked in the throat... Not much I can do in a video or streaming sense, right? So it's unfortunate that it had to happen, but at the very least it's out of the way now. We get this back on track. We move into starting the new series very soon. Of course, the Edmonton series has started as well. That is short term, of course, only going until we get to the real world NHL trade deadline. But let's focus on the Knights. They deserve it. 55, 21, and 6. So not quite as crazy as winning 66 games last year. And as a matter of fact, we didn't even win the conference 
Dallas finished with one more point than we did. 116 points, not good enough to win the President's Trophy, which is mind-boggling, really. But now we know. We have to set our sights on Dallas. We will be playing uh, the Winnipeg Jets in the first round. Anaheim will go up against Dallas. Let's take a look. 100 and 16 points. They deserved it too, but the two extra wins. Goals four per game. We were second just behind Colorado and barely above Dallas. Goals against at a 2 3 2, which was the lowest in the league. Power play at 29.2%, which was the best in the league. Our penalty kill at 81.5, which was top five in the league not too shabby at all and we're on one hell of a winning streak heading into the postseason as well as far as the scoring is concerned it was not a banner year for a lot of our players a down year for the first time elijah lackey though 95 points in 82 games in his return to the club which is great he was a plus 50 on the season victor goldobin was in second 69 points last year, which is very nice, but he rebounds with a career high of 89 points this season with 71 assists. And Josh Fotinos, they were the second line on paper, but the first line in terms of production, he was over a point a game, 80 points in 79 games played. And there we find Russell Claussen in the fourth spot, which is not ideal. His lowest point total since his rookie season. 85, 106, 96, 105, down to 71. Now, he still broke 40 goals, which he has done in every year since his rookie season. But that is still pretty disappointing. Very disappointing, in fact. Cody Glass also dropped back down to reality from a ridiculous run of form over the past five years 73 points, 82, 94, 79, and 108 last season. He drops to just 57 points. And Marvin Mason as well. He missed 11 games this season, but from 103 points to 52. That is his lowest point total in the, um, uh, over in the course of the past four years. Easy for me to say. 102 points, 90 points, 103, and then 52 this season. Jeremy Dykhouse, though, 42 points, not too bad for a third liner. 42 points last year in his first season, and only season in the AHL, 42 points in his rookie season. Will that be good enough for a Calder? Curtis Letty, 37 points is tremendous for a bottom six player, especially with the talent we have in the top six. For Bada, 34 points, phenomenal. Fedorov, still pretty damn good. Lindgren, no complaints. Bembridge, no complaints. The bottom six absolutely delivered defensively jesus so Poprovsky and provorov both broke the 50 point mark taylor gertson hit 25 points which is just ridiculous and goaltending wise he had more appearances he wasn't that much more impressive but andre vasilevsky with the superior save percentage will be the goalie who gets the opportunity to start off our playoff journey. <clears throat> and hopefully, we don't have a goalie controversy this time out, as Connor McDavid wins the scoring race. Lackey was up there, though, which is pretty nice, but unfortunately not what we were hoping for, and man, that's going to be a problem. That's going to be a problem, but we'll talk about that more in a second. John Klingberg led the way for defensemen. The best goaltender in the league, at least in terms of starters and save percentage, Carter Hart. Carter Hart. Save percentages were down, actually. Vassy. That's actually even more impressive that Vassy had a 920. Save percentages were really far down there, all things considered, with how they normally pan out. Unfortunately, Dykehouse will not be winning the caller. Uh, Jace Grume Morris, the Florida Panthers will be taking home that award unless there was an absolutely dominant goalie, which I don't believe there was. So, in terms of our plans moving forward, 
into the playoffs, there's really not a whole hell of a lot we have to do. The squad is set up probably in its best form. I mean, you could debate maybe moving around the bottom six, and obviously Ledoux will be out of that second line left wing spot, but I think we just keep the team as is, hope for the best, and see if they can deliver. We know that on paper, we should be better than everybody. We are the favorites, no matter who we come up against. It's been the same thing now for a few seasons, last year especially. I'd say this year is no different. It's just whether or not this team wins the Cup. And like I said, that would be the focal point of this series every single season. It would just be the question of whether or not we can get the job done and win the Cup. That said, let's take a look at this Winnipeg team, and this is not going to be an easy series by any stretch of the imagination. Timofey Pudinov, the 20-year-old former number one overall pick on that top line, with Ernesto Appleby, former eighth overall pick, actually the year before, and some guy named Patrick Laine. Don't know if you've ever heard of him. Second line, Tavo Teravainen, an 85 at this point. With Nazem Kadri and Andre Kasha. Third line of Christian Veselainen with Jared McCann and Daniel Bright Cruz. Cruz. Cruz? Cruz. Bright Cruz. Going with that. Former second round pick. Yes, Brat is with Nick Bjugstad and Alex Giordano, another former first rounder on that fourth line. It looks like they got some deals done with Florida at one point in time. Defensively, is where we find our opening. So offensively, it's not the most ridiculous lineup we've ever come up against, but it's clear that that's the type of team that could do damage in an EA Sim. Defensively, though, we have them outclassed basically everywhere. It's Will Butcher with Essel Lindell, Connor Carrick with Jacob Truba, and Sam Morin with Frederick Schustrom on that third line, third pairing, the former Vegas Golden Knight who had a 79 overall I don't exactly regret getting rid of. The goaltender, that's where it gets interesting. Another former Golden Knight, Alexander Leonov, up to an 88 overall. And will it be, will it be a ghost of Christmas past that boots us out of the playoffs? It very well could be. When you draft... As much high-end talent as we have, odds are, eventually, we'll have to go through said talent en route to success. This instance is no different. As far as the team meeting is concerned, <sighs> boy, our journey to the cup starts now. I hope so. This is it. We need the best out of you every night. That's true. View the big picture. You know... <clears throat> I think that's it. View the big picture. This is it. This has to be it. I'm not saying look past Winnipeg, but this has to be it. We have to win. It's expected of us. It's certainly my expectation. Let's get this series underway. Round one against Winnipeg. Will this stand as our final postseason series? Now that my coughing break has concluded, jump cut successful, first period, let's see what happens. And that is the worst possible start I think we could have ever imagined. Puninoffs with two goals, Jesper Brat scored as well. They doubled us up in shots and are up 3 to nothing. At the end of the first 20 minutes. You know, Andre, I talked about not having a goalie controversy. Yet, here we are. You proud of yourself? <laughs> Second period, and it's four to nothing. Well, let's get this over with. An absolutely embarrassing and abysmal performance here on home ice to begin this series. Fotinos gets a goal to at least ruin the shutout. But that is just horrific. I'm trying to put it nicely. 
I'm desperately hoping for another goal, but that is not going to happen. 4-1 to one is your final score. Patrick Laine with a four-point night. Gervais Renard did very well in relief of Vasilevsky, and I think that will earn him a start in Game 2. But that is a devastating way to start this series, to start any series, to get blown out 4-1 to one on home ice. And again, with that added pressure of this being it, I'm scared. I'm scared that this could be the last episode. Gervais Schwenard will get the opportunity in Game 2. He's earned it. And as far as the team meeting is concerned, I thought Menulag was going to have a skip through it. As far as the team meeting is concerned, I'm going with the assertive response. Yeah, you better be pissed. Good. Be as pissed as I am. Be as pissed as I am that you let down all those beautiful fans. All those beautiful fans who paid the hard-earned money to watch you not try after going 10-0 in your final 10 games of the regular season. It's playoff time, baby. We got to win. First period of game two. And we do get the opening goal. It's a Marvin Mason, 13 shots to seven. Not quite as dominant of a scoreline as they had, all things considered. But, you know, we're, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. Second period, that doesn't help. Nick Bjugstad, the fourth liner, with the goal. We are even in shots, tied on the board. Just about even in shots at the very least. As we go to the third period in what may be the biggest 20 minutes in this club's history. Tavo Teravainen scores, Line scores on the power play. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. As we go with the non discreet halls at Breezer. Hashtag not an ad. We get a late goal from Russell Claussen. Unfortunately, that is not enough. The Winnipeg Jets take both games on the road to begin this series and have put the Vegas Golden Knights in danger. We are certainly on the ropes to go with a tide, with a tried and tested. There we go. To go with the tide pod. To go with the tried and tested saying of uh, a boxing comparison is the point. I'm finding it more difficult to talk with this lovely Hall's Breezer, the throat wolves, than I thought I would. But you know what? We're going to make it through this because I'm doing what I have to do. Damn it. Unlike my team, who are very much struggling as far as who gets to start in Game 3 as the series shifts to Winnipeg. Holy shit, Vassy. Mm. Vassy gets the chance to redeem himself, but my god, is the pressure on. That top pairing has been brutalized. I'm going to make the change of swapping Nickel and Rosita. It's a big step up for Terrence Nickel, but we're going to give him the opportunity. And as far as the rest of the team is concerned, we need we need changes everywhere, basically. Pretty much everywhere. Let's go with Lindgren and Bembridge with Dykehouse. And we are going... Uh, I don't even know, because that first line hasn't been all that effective. Let's swap Glass and Goldobin. See how it goes. Throw whatever we can at the wall. It's a situation that we never should have found ourselves in, having to even contemplate changes to the lines as of Game 3. Yet, here we are. The fans are excited. They might, I mean, they're not. I'm not. I can't say I'm excited. Unless we, you know, consider anxiousness excitement now. It is Game 3. And if we lose this game, if we lose this game, I think you know what that means. First period of game number three, and McCann gets the opening goal, but we rebound with two goals in 29 seconds. Josh Votinos and Russell Claussen. 15 shots to nine. 
We're up two to one on the board. Decent, but not great. Second period. See how this goes. Okay. Right. Right. That. That is not good. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not good. We are down three to two <clears throat> as we head to the third period in desperate need of an offensive spark and a good penalty kill, which we get. Power play opportunity, a five on three, goes to waste. And that might be the death knell for the Golden Knights. Again, not just, not just in this series in terms of being against Winnipeg, but this series in general. We are one game away from the end, and Russell Clausen will not see the end of this series. And I think that's fitting. That we win a cup, <clears throat> this team takes an even larger stride forward in terms of being an absolute dynasty, and now we can't even get out of the starting gates in the playoffs. Bykoff is the only guy to call up. That's not even a debate. As we will uh, probably drop Paul Ledoux here, and hopefully we can make that call up, and we can... I don't know what the lines are going to look like for this next game. No idea. I'm going to go best lines for the moment for both the NHL and the AHL. We'll simulate to the day in case we want to change up the goaltending. But in all honesty, we might just be delaying the inevitable. There is a chance that this is it. That there is only one more game left for the Golden Knights. It's got to be MGC. Gervais Schwenard is in. The power play has been completely ineffective. Obviously, Bembridge wouldn't have been there had we not had the injury to Klaassen. And as far as who we start, I think it's going to be probably that third line standing... Uh, Standing pat the way they are. Let's go with Verbata Fedorov Bykov. Bembridge will be on that right hand side. Although, <clears throat> you know, Letty might get dropped. How is Letty done? One point, but a minus three. Bykov's going to get a better opportunity, I think. No points for Goldobin. Two goals for Fotinos. Let's go. For Fotinos, Glass, and Bykoff, Mason, Goldobin, Lackey. And we'll just see what happens. It's not a ton of pressure. Just wait to see what happens. I mean, we're down 3 to nothing in this series. As crazy as that is, our top pairing, just based off of performance, is going to be Gertz and Nickel. We'll go with Bobrovsky, Rositas, Provorov, and Hannon. Seems kind of crazy, but we started off this series with the best possible line combinations. You know, tried and tested, of course. That has brought us regular season success. Tonight is make or break. We lose and we're done. It shouldn't say however. It should say forever. If tonight is a loss, I can promise you serious house cleaning because I will be out as GM and Millberry will take over. Get it done because this is it. The last hurrah. If you lose here, I cannot save you. If we go forward with it, and ultimately we probably will, maybe not immediately, but if we go forward with it and the AI takes over. Game four in Winnipeg, first period. And the Jets get the opening goal. It's Jared McCann. Second period. It's two goals apiece. Puninoff makes it 2-0. Bykoff gets a goal. I think his first NHL goal ever. And Bobrovsky makes it 2-all. Tara Vinen restores the lead. As Vassy ended up being back in. Which is fine. Third period. Will this be 
the final 20 minutes for the Golden Knights. Bykoff scores again. Huge performance from him. And Bykoff with the hat trick. Fresh off of the Winnipeg power play. It's 4-3. to three. The Jets with another power play. They score. It's Tavo Teravainen. Well, Bykoff's efforts go to waste. Three minutes left. Power play for the Jets. We are going to overtime. We're not going to jump in. This is it. Overtime here in game four. Power play for the Jets. And that's it. It's all over. Just like that, that suddenly and in, in an instant. A power play goal for Winnipeg. And we are swept by the Jets. Bykoff's effort goes to waste. And the Vegas Golden Knights crash and burn again. We are swept in the first round. And it's all over. Two horrifically disappointing losses in the playoffs back to back. And that is all she wrote. This series, at least in terms of regular uploads, granted some would say that was over already, but you know, I was sick. This series is over. And in a way, it's going to be kind of tough to say, hey, who should be in the Hall of Fame? Because, sure, we won a cup, and there are some legendary players in this series. But I think in a way, they might, be known a bit more for not getting it done in the playoffs at certain times. Especially these last two seasons. Andre Vasilevsky, granted he wasn't bad last year, but that is absolutely horrific. Absolutely horrific. And it is a damn shame, because again, we have so much talent coming up through the ranks, but... Now is the right time. Now is the right time. Like I said, I don't know if we will continue this in terms of that Millbury mode idea, or if I'll just continue it on stream one night, because there is still a lot of talent where I'd like to see what they can do. But regardless, it is a damn shame for it to end like this. Not only one and done in the playoffs, but for us to be swept it is an absolute embarrassment. And not the way that I wanted to see this team call it a day. But ultimately, them's the breaks. Again, that is it. I want to know from you guys down in the comments who your Hall of Fame nominees are. The next video that will be up in the series will have the polls attached. And we will find out who makes it into the channel Hall of Fame. The players that deserve to be remembered as the best of the best. From this series, the Vegas Golden Knights franchise mode series. Series, 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 series. Thank you guys for watching. I wish it had ended on a more spectacular note, but that doesn't happen all the time. It just doesn't. Even with a super team like this, that just doesn't always happen. I will see you guys soon. <sighs> swept. Swept by Winnipeg. That is the, the lasting, that's the lasting image, the final image of this series. <laughs> Damn shame.